Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. Recently, I received a video request in the comments, and they're asking about connecting target setting with the ABCD method of learning objectives that I had already covered in an earlier video. So I'll link the ABCD method video below, but basically they wanted to go a bit more in depth into how to use that approach when doing target setting. Now I want to make clear that target setting isn't something that I technically used when I taught. It wasn't a idea or a concept that I had heard of before. Um, but from what I gather, it's very similar to setting learning objectives that you want your students to accomplish and then doing formative assessment, summative assessment to see if they've reached that target. Now, from what I can tell doing that research and connecting it with the ABCD method, there seems to be like nine levels of potentially using target setting and ABCD objectives together. And I'm not covering all of those, but just to give you a sense of how I see it, I see it first as you could have at the university level, right? What is the target the university has for their students, right? Basically, what's their mission statement? And then you go down, the college, right? So maybe the College of Arts and Sciences. What is their target for their students? Then you have the department. What's the English department's target for their students? And then you go into individual courses. So uh, potentially you can do from department to different specializations in the department. So children's literature versus linguistics versus literature versus creative writing. But basically, next would be the courses. So you have a course, what is the target? What do you want your students to achieve by the end of this course? Then after that, you can go even smaller. Here's a unit in the course. What's my target for this unit? What do I want students to achieve? And then you go down again for a specific class period. What do you want them to achieve? How is this lesson in this class period going to achieve something? How is this activity going to achieve something? And you can even go as small as how is this reading or this video? right, or this text that you assign students going to have them reach a target. So there's a lot of levels that you can use this with, but I want to focus more so on starting with the course and then going down from there. When it comes to a course, I think backwards design can work really well when you're creating A, B, C, D objectives that are connected to target setting. So in case you don't know, backwards design is literally what it sounds like. It's when you design a course backwards by thinking, where do you want your students to end up at the end of this course? Now that you know that, how are we going to get there? Let's work backwards from this endpoint. So obviously the endpoint is going to really change depending on what course you are teaching. But using my own example, right? If I'm teaching a literature course, then what is my major target when I'm teaching the basic prerequisite of a children's literature course in, in my program? Right, so that's what I have here. Undergraduate class, children's literature, it's the first in a series for, let's say, English education majors. Well, then at that point, I might say, okay, the main target that I have, there might be more of them, but the main one is I want my students to be able to understand and analyze children's literature, right? That's my main goal. I want them to be able to understand and analyze children's literature. And so from there, well, that's a very general target, right? So what specifically, how are they going to achieve understanding? How are they going to achieve being able to analyze this literature? And so now you have, all right, well, I'm going to have three units in my course and those units are going to be A, B, and C, right? So now you have the smaller ones and now you can create targets for there. So the target for unit one is this, the target for unit two is this, the target for unit three is that. And then again, you keep going down that range. So for, you have the unit, well, for your class sessions, for your lessons, for your texts, for your activities, what are you trying to get them to achieve? Now, I don't think you need to have, you definitely don't need to have, in my opinion, an A, B, C, D objective for all of these things, for every text, for every activity, for every lesson, every class period, etc. But you should definitely have one for the units. Right, so I, I would definitely say, okay, well at the end of this un unit, then you wanna have your audience, my students, the behavior, will be able to do this thing, the conditions, with, with the help or without the help in this time frame, right, using these tools, right? And they'll be able to achieve this with this degree of success, getting an 80 or higher, getting a 75 or higher, getting a 90 or higher, 
being able to do this without having to redo something, right? They're gonna to have to be no major revisions after they submit their final paper, or they'll be able to present the speech without having to have any awkward pauses, right? So what's the degree of success for this particular unit? So I do think you create those for the units, and then you can decide how you want to use it or not use it for the smaller elements of the course. So when you're thinking of target setting, as far as like, okay, well, here is a target for students. How do I help them achieve it? Well, yes, the units will obviously very much help with this, but what's going to be key here is the activities and the lessons. So let's say unit three of my literature course is going to have the objective that students will be able to write a seven page research paper, mostly independently, and get an 80 or higher once it's assessed, right? So that's my A, B, C, D objective of unit three. Knowing that, again, work backwards. How are they gonna achieve that target? How am I gonna help them do that? Well, let's say it's a research paper and literature course, so they're gonna be using MLA. So to make sure I have lessons about MLA. What else? Well, research. You can't guarantee students know how to research. So you're gonna make sure you have lessons about how to use the library databases, about how to find the libraries and books, how to find if an article was credible online or not, or a video, right? So we're gonna have lessons on research. What else? Well, it's a paper, academic writing. How many lessons are we gonna have about academic writing, right? But it's a literature course. You're writing about a book, or maybe multiple books, fairy tales, whatever. Well then, you're gonna to have to have lessons on analyzing that literature as well being able to research in connection to literature, not just any topic. So you're gonna really dive into, okay, here's my objective. What are the little pieces that students need in order to achieve that target? And once you know that, you start building your lesson plans from there. Now you wanna have some sense of the order in which these things should occur because you're gonna scaffold, you're gonna build off of them. So in the case of this research paper, well, what do you need to be able to do first? Well, first you need to be able to like understand the literature that they're going to be researching. So spending time doing that, that's probably something that happened a lot in unit one, in the beginning of this course, just a lot of time reading, discussing, analyzing the stories, maybe not so much writing, but verbally, right? So, okay, you probably have achieved that in the unit one and unit two. Well, what else? MLA. Well, is this your first paper in this course? If so, maybe you haven't covered MLA. If it's the third paper or the second, then maybe you have, right? So you're gonna really gonna figure out, okay, what was achieved in unit one and two, and what still needs to be achieved in unit three, and then you have your targets or your goals for the lessons in that particular unit. So basically, from my understanding of how to combine these two together, I think you should really think course level first, what do students need to be able to achieve before they hit the next class in the sequence, right? And knowing that, all right, well, how are we gonna have them achieve this? By having different units that are focused towards these goals. Okay, now I have the units. Well, what are gonna be the, the, the objectives for them? And then so on and so forth. So you might find that what's key is doing formative assessment, right? So you don't wanna just have like, here's the final product of unit one, two, and three, and that's the only way I'll know whether they're reaching their target. Because if they miss a target in unit one, then it's gonna be very hard for them to catch up in unit two and unit three. So you're gonna to wanna to have formative assessment, right? Okay, while you're creating the unit one final project, you're gonna turn in this thing, you're gonna turn in that thing. You're gonna discuss with me in a one-on-one -on -one conference this thing, right? So you do the small things, assess them, and then the final product as well. So you can make sure that you're on the right track. Because if it turns out, okay, well, they actually, MLA was discussed in the first unit, but then you've got the papers and only three fourths of them really understood MLA citation in text. Well, you know to focus more of that in unit two, even though you hadn't planned to, you built it in because you know they need that in order to achieve the target of the course and the target of the third unit. So this is just my thoughts on how you can really dive into this. I think looking into backwards design can be really helpful along with target setting and ABCD learning objectives. If you have recommendations for other videos you'd like me to do, you can let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, click like and let me know, and subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on future content.